Good evening, watchers. David Macmillan, retired troublemaker here. What are your entertainments over Christmas and New Year's break? Can't go out. <laughs> Though Christmas Day, when everyone was told to stay home, I noticed dozens of other lawbreakers out driving to family lunches, just dropping off gifts from a safe distance, I'm sure. There's no going to the cinema, and why share slimy seats with the unclean? Parties and raves are out, so it's just staying at home getting fatter. Watching TV. Uh, what's coming? Bruce Willis in another heavy coat to disguise his age, teeming with a young renegade ex black ops kid now hunted by the NSA. The villains will be the Russians again. If Russians didn't exist, we'd have to invent them for the movies. Disney Plus X has brought in cancelled actors, Kevin Spacey, Louis C.K. and Johnny Depp, to flash out their first CGI teen comedy using dead actors, including Heath Ledger, reanimated in Tucked Away, based on Woody Allen's sidelined Netflix script. You'll have vampires old and new, children's books that no one ever liked at any age, made into lavish films where all the kids act like adults and all the adults like children. Utterly bogus sci-fi where, no matter how far in the future it is set, the technology is already last year's but in next year's colours, while the soldiers fight like it's World War II. Whatever is streaming, the main players are always a group of five buddies. The villain is always the best dresser, unless he's psycho, in which case he's in a check shirt with the top button fastened. So instead of hopelessly poking around in the air with your remote controls, just listen for... Ten minutes for an explanation of something you have been mistaught, certainly misled, and probably haven't understood simply and clearly. And it is this. How it is you came to be in the shape you are, with all those functioning parts. A human, I mean. At essence, if it were not for millions of years of killing and murder, you wouldn't be here now. This is a short story of murder and death, killings we should be grateful for, or not. I'll take it from 500 million years ago. One of the simplest creatures, flatworms. We are all really flatworms of a kind. But instead of a long tube for a gizzard, we have a nine-yard tube all bunched up and bagged in our colon so we can carry it around. Flatworms. In the sea. There wouldn't be any trees on land for another 150 million years. Plants came along after sea creatures. The land had no flowers, nothing much to see, a bit of fungus going on, no land animals, but in water, plenty of action, because then, as now, those simple critters soon began eating each other for a living. There was a better energy return from killing everything you could kill and eating them than grazing on seaweed or plankton. Ignore all those pictures of creatures changing shape over time. Never happened. This is a story of killing. Murder. Just about every creature alive today exists because mum and dad were better killers. Just one technical matter to keep in mind. When babies are born, even baby flatworms, about one in 500 do not come out as perfect copies. That is what reproduction is supposed, supposed to do, make identical copies. But that process doesn't always work. For example, take some random mutated gene, today's world, and you get a sixth finger on a hand. 
useless like most random things. What you can't pick with your pinky isn't worth picking. If a sixth finger was any use, we'd all have them. Why? Because we'd only marry people with that sixth finger on each hand and then have twelve-fingered children. Now, back to killing. Your flatworm didn't have any eyes. Bumped into things all the time. Still, if it could bump into anything that would go in its mouth, it would eat it. Not very efficient, though. Some flatworm kids, your average mum had uh, 50,000 children, had a bony bit on its mouth. Just a random birth defect. But the kids with bony bits could grip their food better, so lived to have their own bony-mouthed kids. Of course, the usual mass slaughter followed, so what with 50,000 kids it didn't matter at first. But mass killing being what it is, soon only the flatworms with the rows of bony bits survived to have kids with other bony bit flatworms. Because they ate more, they made more. That helps in an age of massacres. Keep that cycle going and only the best grippers survived. Those with teeth-like structures. Now, this is important. The flatworms are as thick as a plank of wood. Not that there was any wood. So stupid, it's not as though they wanted anything teeth-like. Just that the only ones who survived the daily carnage to have kids of their own were the random mutants with teeth-like structures. Sure, they were still too dumb to marry flatworms with teeth. It's just that the few throwbacks born that way, without teeth, didn't do too well at the dinner table. Soon gone forever. Now, not being able to tell up from down didn't help either. The flatworms that swam around warmer waters above only had to dip down and get a piece of cool water flatworm. And they didn't know down from up. And up was air, after all, nowhere to go if you live in the sea. Without vision, they'd swim straight into every massacre. But some, just some, were born with dark spots in another random mutation. Very little help. But here's the thing. Like a freckle on us that feels warmer to sunlight than normal skin, the flatworms who had big freckles on either side, not the usual hundreds of small ones, could feel sunlight. Not feel it in the sense of understanding it, of course. That doesn't mean anything in itself. Too stupid to know what that sensation meant. Sunlight is up if you live in the sea. Now, among those big frecklers, some, just some, would swim up to higher, warmer water. Not because they wanted to or thought it was safer. They are near brainless. They don't know safe from danger. Just that all those who didn't react to a warm freckle by swimming up were dead, eaten, wiped out. Think of the numbers involved. 80 billion flatworms. One in a thousand with a big sensitive freckle. And just one in a thousand of those randomly wired to swim up, which would warm their freckle. That's still 80,000 flatworms who head to sunlight. Not that they have a clue what they're doing. Not a scooby. But the ones that swam down, or sideways, in their reaction to that sensation, were butchered. So, those 80,000 are the only ones left alive, and the only ones who live to have kids of their own. And they all, except those soon to be dead, swim just under the surface, where they have a better chance of living, with the sun at their backs, blocking the vision and the sensation of those below. Looking at that, you'd think they'd know what they're doing. And they don't. It's just that all those who don't react that way are dead. The reaction is behaviour. Not thinking, as we like to imagine it. And this change happens in maybe 10,000 generations of the kids, of the kids, of the kids, kids, kids. Not a change, 
as in a transformation, but a change of the few living replacing the millions dead. A few thousand years and the freckle wasn't good enough anymore to keep even them from being cut down by predators before breeding. By then, they all had sensitive freckles and swam up. The only ones among them who were not munched up were those with another mutation that had their freckle running over a nerve line. Keep killing enough of them and soon, a few million years, only those with the better part of what could be called a simple eye freckle, I mean, only good enough to feel left from right, have survived. All those with nerveless freckles had gone. And don't get the idea that every random mutation is useful. Most are not. Most just, most just lead to more death of the mutant. Some do nothing like COVID-19 mutations last month. Only one of the millions of C19 mutations had a useful difference. Useful to the virus, that is. And is now more numerous. Just that every so often, when you are the freak, you have the edge. The curly tail guy can hang on while his sisters fall to predators. Creatures don't turn into other creatures, or more complex ones, more advanced. It's just that the others, those without the new twist, were killed, eaten. Death is what drives this machine. There is no change in the shape of fish or cats. We humans group them together because they look similar and have a genetic line. Fine, useful. But no animal species became another. It is simply all the other types, all the other variations, were dead. Before you pat yourself on the back for being above all others, look at these. The sharks or dolphins get to eat mostly those on the outside of this fishball. The majority inside the ball are usually safer. Why do those fish do it? Because they know some will be safer? Because it's a better defensive position? They are not much smarter than flatworms. It's just that those fish who did not behave that way are dead. Those who did not ball up didn't live to have more fish kids. They have no idea why they do it. Next time you feel clever because your behaviour saved you, don't think it was that silent talk you call thinking. It is simply that if we didn't behave the way we do, we would have been dead thousands of years ago. Go ask a Neanderthal why his kind are not around anymore. You can't. We wiped them out. Screwed a few, but wiped them out didn't like the way they talked, or smelled. Just not our kind. Evolution is the replacement of one kind with another, not some thoughtful modification, some smooth change. In animals, the driver for that replacement is usually killing. Also, that selection is a mindless process. Of a thousand mutations, few will have any effect, and a few mutations will bring on an only death, end of the line. But sometimes that one mutation in 1,000 lets you live a little longer to breed. And when the killers do their dirty work, it can be the lucky freak who swims away. A toast to murder at sea. You learned something today. Now, uh, what's on Prime? Sasha Baron Cohen in the Nicholas Cage story? Yeah. I better check in on Kevin and Jed, I think. See what they're up to. Good night.